this morning. Can we get a round of applause for Delphi? Amen. We give God thanks because of a new year. So we give God thanks. Anybody else that wants to give God thanks about something this week? Just one thing. Life, health, strength, something that you want to give God thanks about. Don't be shy. Don't leave me uh, 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 lagging here. Anybody that just wants to say something real quick. What are you grateful for, Sophia? This week, what are you grateful for? My daughter went on her full first trip away without mummy or daddy with school and she had a great time and she came out safe in Jesus' name. <laughs> Can we get amen for that? For development. Sister Mercer, what are you grateful for? I'm going to try my hardest to... For him to wipe me out, wake me up. Anybody else grateful for God waking you up this morning? Amen. 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 I'm grateful to God because as many of you know that I had an, an Achilles rupture, an operation on my Achilles. And um, I'm grateful to be back in church today. I've, I've missed church for a few weeks, so I'm, so I'm walking with a limp. I'm just grateful that I've gotten into the house of the Lord today. And I'm wondering if there's anybody else that may have walked in to church with a limp. Maybe not a physical boot, but maybe a limp in your spiritual life. Maybe a limp in your, in your mental health. Maybe a, 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 you're not fully 100% in, in your walk, your faith walk with Jesus. Maybe you've just uh, walked in here with a, a, little, a little limp today. And I want to let you know that this is the perfect place to be. That even if you don't feel like coming to church, even if you didn't feel like praying this morning, even if you didn't feel like praising, this is the perfect place to be, uh, to experience the presence and, and the, the awesomeness of God. So I'm grateful that you are here today. I'm grateful even if, you, if you're here with a limp. I'm grateful uh, that, that, that you are, are here this morning. And we want to welcome you both to our online viewers and to those who, 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 who will be uh, joining us today. But I want you to do something real quick. Could you just stand with me so that we can say a word of prayer, please? Could you just stand so that we can say a word of prayer? Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this holy Sabbath day. Lord, we are thankful for all that you have done in our lives and through our lives for this whole week. Lord, you have brought us from a mighty long way through many hurdles, through many struggles, through dangers seen and unseen. And we are thankful to have made it here today. Lord, we come and we are in need of your presence. We come in need of a message from you today. Lord, we come in anticipation of blessings. So Lord, I ask that you would show yourself in this moment that we will have a spiritual encounter with you so that we will not leave this place the same, but we would leave this place knowing that we have brought, been brought closer to Jesus. So Lord, reveal yourself in this very moment. Bless us and keep us. In your name I do pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite the praise team to lead us in worship this morning. Good morning, church. Oh, you can do. I know there's only a few of us in here, but good morning, church. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Why are you happy? If you're happy, tell me why. <laughs> well, I'm happy because, you know, God has been good. Um, so good, in fact, this morning, probably about an hour and a half ago, we didn't have a full praise team. It was just going to be me and, and one other person. But God has brought the singers. Amen. You know, he comes through when we most need him. So now we've got a full praise team. So I just want to thank God that we're going to be able to sing and praise and magnify and lift his name up on high. So our first song we're going to sing this morning is Ancient of Days. Blessing and honor, glory and what? Do you believe he has the power? Ooh. Do you believe he has the power? The power to change our lives, the power to do wonders and miracles. Ancient of Days, from every nation, all of creation bow before the Ancient of Days. 
And as I always say, you don't have to stay glued to your seat. If you want to stand up and praise the Lord in any way, shape or form, you can do so. Because we're here to magnify and lift his name on high. Blessing and honor. Blessing, glory and power. Glory be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before. Oh, sing it again. Blessing and honor. Blessing, glory and power. Be unto. Oh, from every nation. All of creation, bow before every tongue in heaven, every tongue in shall declare all your glory. Oh, at your throne in worship, you will be exalted, and your kingdom and your kingdom shall not pass away. Oh, ancient of days. Blessing and honor, glory and power. I want to hear you sing it with smiles on your faces this morning. Here we go. Blessing. Blessing, glory and power. Be unto. Be unto the From every nation, yes. From every nation. All of creation. All of creation. Bow before. Bow before the Oh, sing it again. Blessing and honor. Blessing and glory and power. Yes, yes, that's the Lord. Oh, from every nation, all of creation. From every nation, oh, yes, Lord. all of creation. Yes, bow before, bow before the angels. That's why we sing every tongue, yes. Every tongue in heaven shall declare, shall declare oh, your glory. Your glory. In the of our throne. Oh, in worship. in worship, you will be exalted, O oh God. And your kingdom, and your kingdom shall not pass oh, away. Ancient. Oh, and just up there, every tongue in heaven shall be clear. Oh, yes, shall bow and throne. In worship, you will be exalted, oh God. And your kingdom shall not pass away. Oh, and just up every tongue in heaven shall be clear. Yes, your glory, Lord, shall bow and throne. You will be exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom shall not pass away. One more time, O oh, ancient of every tongue in heaven shall declare your glory, Lord. In worship, you will be exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom shall not pass away. O oh, ancient of days, O oh, ancient of days. Oh, ancient of days. Oh, ancient, ancient of days. Oh, ancient of days. Oh, ancient of days. Yes, he's the ancient, ancient of days. Oh, he's the power of glory and honor. Oh, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Yes, oh, ancient of days. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will what? When, what happened? Who did you meet? Jesus, the Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Has he been a tender, compassionate friend to you? Yes? Has he been working in your lives? Yes? You know, sometimes we feel down and we feel like, you know, we can't carry on. And sometimes we can fall into despair. But we have a friend, a tender, compassionate friend who knows our every need, who will supply and he will come through for us. So just think about the words of this song as you sing it this morning. Heaven came down and glory, glory filled my soul. Oh, what a wonderful. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. day I will never. Day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness, 
Savior I wandered in Jesus, the Savior I met. Jesus, my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy I am telling. He made all the darkness deeper. Oh, heaven. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole, He made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. And my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. All right, let me hear you on your own. Born of a spirit. Born of a spirit with life. All right, amen. Justified fully. Oh, what a stand in his mind. And a transaction. Come on, Nick. Sing it out. He saved me. All right, all together, heaven came down. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed And my away. night was turned to death. And my night was turned Oh, heaven, day. yes. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. All right, here we go. Now I have a hope that will surely. Now I have a hope that will surely. After the passing of time. After the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure. I have a future in heaven. There in those where those mansions. Those mansions And it's because of that wonderful day. And it's because of that wonderful day. When at the cross I believe. When at the cross I believe. Riches eternal. Riches eternal and blessings from so his precious hand. From his precious hand. All right, sing it out. Here we go. Heaven came down. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. It filled my soul when that. When at the oh, cross yes. my, Savior my Savior made me whole. Oh, my sins were washed. My sins oh, yes. were washed and away. And my night was turned and into my day. Night was And glory be. Sing that chorus soul. again. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole. He made me whole. My sins, my sins they were washed away. And my night, and my night was turned It was turned into day. Let's stand up to sing this song. Blessed assurance. Jesus is what? Is he yours? Yes. yes. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchased of God. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. Let's stand as we sing this song. And I really want you to meditate on the words of the song. They have so much meaning. And that God is our blessed assurance. You know, he's promised us a home in heaven. And it's up to us to claim that promise. You know, do we all want to go to heaven? Yeah, we all want to go to heaven? I certainly do. And we have that blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. So let's claim it this morning as we sing this song. All right, there we go. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte. Oh, a glory divine, a glory divine, air of salvation, air of salvation. Oh, a purchase of God, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, born of His Spirit. Oh, yes, I'm washed. Let's sing that first verse again. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. Come on, sing it with conviction this morning. Jesus is yours. Sing it out. 
Praised our Savior. Are we well? It's good to see you all. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Just, just give me a wave. Um, uh, the word tells us that it's good for us to come together as brethren. Because um, there's a blessing in it. Um, we were not made to do life alone. 
And so, it's good to see you all. But at the same time, it's, it's good to fellowship with you all. And at this time, I want to pray with you all. Is that okay? Anybody um, need a prayer? I know I do. Um, so we're just going to have a brief time of prayer. Usually, um, for those of us who are here on a regular, um, we separate, you know, the, the men go across and the ladies, the women stay in here. Um, but we're going to do this together this time, this week. We're going to stay together and we are going to pray um, together. Now, I know for, this, for, for, for just being alive, I know that we're going through stuff. Okay, I don't have to ask you. I know that. We're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We live in a world of sin. There's so much happening around us. And so I know that we're all going through stuff privately. But if there's something really special, something, something big that's weighing on your heart, I'm going to give you the opportunity to just come and stand with me up here. Um, and I'm going to pray. If you have something that you want to give God thanks for in a special way, I want you to come up. I'm going to give a quick testimony. Um, I'm thankful to God that this week um, he was with my son and he passed his driving test and he is now able to drive, which is probably going to be problems for me later on. Um, but I'm really grateful. Um, it's a huge milestone. He worked really hard and I want to thank God for um, allowing him to achieve what he has achieved. Um, and I just want to give God praise for that. Now, I know there are others who may have something that they want to give God thanks for. I'm going to give 30 seconds for someone to just raise their hand or just say out if there's something that they want to just praise God for, or give thanks to God for anyone. Just throw it out. into the house of God this morning and I'm having to remind myself of that I'm in the house of God and I feel so safe I feel so secure I feel so loved by God's people that I don't I realize I don't have to worry about that so that's what I want to thank God for I want to thank God for his mercies and his grace amen, amen. one more one more person anyone at the back yes Laura yeah yeah it's just yeah just throw it out So, I'm going to ask anyone who has a special request to just come and join me up here and we will pray together. Um, I'm going to sing, do you know, um, speak to your father. Pray, 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 pray. Speak to your Father, the Ancient of Days. Pray, pray, pray always. Speak to your Father, the Ancient 
light of day. So as I sing, just anyone who wants to come and join. Pray, pray. Anybody who has a request, just come and join me. Pray, pray. Speak to your father, the ancient of days. Pray, pray, pray always. Speak to your father. Speak, speak to your father. One more time, speak. Speak to your father, the ancient of days, the ancient of days. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you that you spared our lives, that we are able to be here this morning. There are some who were here yesterday and are not today. There are some who were here last week and are not here this week. We want to pray in a special way for those who have lost loved ones. You have seen it fit to spare our lives another day, another week. And on this day, Lord, your children who are here have chosen to be in your presence for as Diane has said that there is fullness of joy in your presence and when we are in your presence Lord all things seem to fade away in the light of your glory and grace but Lord you know the hearts of everyone here you know, when we leave this place, you know exactly what they are going back to. And so, Lord, in a special way, I just ask that you will give, grant, pour your Holy Spirit on each and every heart bowed right now. For, Father, we know that if we have your Spirit, Lord, we have all things. We have peace. Peace. We have joy, we have assurance, we have hope. Father, you know that we are living in a time where hope is a luxury. Hope is something that is waning as the hours go by. For if the truth be told, sometimes we can look at what is happening in our current climate what may be happening in our bank accounts, Lord, what is happening in our workplace, what seemingly is about to happen and, and there isn't much hope. But Lord, you have told us in your word that we should cast our cares on you because you care for us and that if we are bold enough if we are brave enough, if we have faith enough to give our problems to you, you are able to do above and beyond anything that we can ask, think, or even imagine. And so, Lord, in a special way right now, we place, we, we, we put, we lay all our issues, our burdens, our challenges at your feet. For Father, there is no other place where we can put them. We cannot store them in our hearts. We cannot carry them in our minds, Lord. We cannot, we cannot carry them in, in our homes and in our situations because it's too much for us to bear. We're breaking down. We're, we're falling apart. We, we are losing our relationships and, 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 and we are not able to communicate properly because these burdens, we, we, we don't know how to get through them. But Lord, we know you are able. And Father, you have even requested for us to give you our problems. 
But Father, I want to thank you for those who, who have a testimony also. Maybe they haven't shared it with us. But Lord, you have done something great in their lives. Or you are doing something wonderful in their lives. And we want to thank you for that. We want to praise you for that. Because in all things, Lord, we will give you praise. In all things, we will sing of your goodness. Because you are a God who, regardless of what we are facing and regardless of what we are going through, we know that all things will work out for our good. And so, Lord, I pray in a special way that you will, you will, you will encourage that individual. Help them to hold on. Help them to know that all things will work together for them because they love you, because we love you, and we are called according to your purpose. And so, Lord, we will not be afraid of what is going on around us, for a thousand shall fall at our right and ten thousand shall fall at our left, but none, the word says, shall come nigh our dwelling. And so, Lord, we believe your word right now. Keep us, O oh God. Put a hedge of protection around us in these troubled trouble times. And Lord, when, when you come through for us, help us to be careful. Be careful to give you the praise and to give you the glory. For you have done marvelous things. We thank you, O oh God. Not because of anything we done, we've done or we can do, but simply because of who you are. And because you are, everything else is. And so, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up and we magnify you. For, for you are God and you are God alone. Hear us, O oh God. Father, where we have fallen short, may your, your blood prevail for us right now. Forgive us, Lord, where we, we have failed you. And fill us up with your Holy Spirit creating us, Lord, a clean heart and renew the right mind within us. As we encounter your word today, as we encounter your presence today, your spirit today, may we leave this place changed. May we leave this place encouraged with hope, with steadfast feet, knowing that wherever we are going home to face, Lord, we are not alone. And he who is with us and for us is stronger than he who is against us. And so we will, we will not fear. We thank you for hearing our prayer. May the church say, Amen. Amen. So welcome once again to Parkside. So for those of you who are here for the first time, um, Welcome, welcome. Um, I think I've seen Sister Kodjo somewhere. Welcome, Sister Kodjo. Um, and those of you also who I might not know by name, but welcome. Um, I believe this week there were quite a few birthdays. A couple of people celebrated uh, birthdays. I know Nicole had a birthday. Um, I believe Alistair also had a birthday. And um, where is she? Indy. Was it your birthday yesterday? Indy, was it your birthday yesterday? Okay, happy birthday. And I believe today somebody is 16. 16. How many of you remember when you were 16 years old? Anyone remember? Well, Delphine, um, I'd like us to please, um, Warren, if you don't mind, if we can sing happy birthday. I know you get embarrassed and shy, so you don't need to stand up. I'm not going to get you to stand up because you're 16 now. All right, so can we just sing happy birthday to Delphine, please? thank God for your life and for everybody else. So anybody else who has had a birthday this week that may not have been brought to our attention would also just like to thank God for your life. Okay, so at this point, um, I'm going to ask the children um, to come up because um, I believe Laura has a very interesting story. 
So all the children, if you don't mind just coming to the front, Laura has a very nice story for you. So can you just come to the front? Yes, Luke. church can i hear a happy sabbath from you okay i heard something from right here okay one more time everybody i want to hear from here and when i hear from there okay one two three happy sabbath. all right good i even heard an echo that was really really good okay i want to share a story with you today uh that happened to me many many years ago and um I, before i share your story i want to ask you guys how, like, you need to pick one. Which one do you like more? Mountains or sea? Mountains. Mountains. Anybody sea? Sea. Okay, good one. What about you? Sea. And you? Mountains or sea? Sea. Great. What about? Mountains. Okay, cool. We're about 50-50. Where are you at? Sea. Okay, okay. I think sea is winning. Now, I grew up near the sea, okay? From when I was little till I grew up, I always saw the sea. I mean, I live literally a 15-minute drive to the sea, okay? So I could see the sea anytime I wanted. Now, I really, really liked it a lot. You guys like the sea? Go swimming in the sea? Anybody gone swimming? Yeah? But I live... I, does anybody know what country I come from? Any of you? Anybody? Uh, close. I am a little bit Russian. My blood is 50% Russian. Okay, guys. I'm... I'm Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Okay, I'm not. But I'm sure somewhere in my ancestry there might be. I don't know. Australia. Ooh, do I sound Australian? I like that. Australia is cool, but of course I'm not from there. Yep. Barbados. Barbados. <laughs> do I look Barbadian? I, I, I'd love to be in Barbados. That's like so exotic. Okay. Lithuania. Yay. <laughs> okay. What, what did you think? Slovenia. Slovenia. Okay, it's all Enia in the end, so you're right. Okay. Lithuania. Okay, now. Lithuania is a tiny, tiny country. I mean, literally, the whole entire country has only like 3 million people, which sounds like a lot, but compared to England, it's a tiny, tiny country, okay? And we are right in the valley, right by the sea in the valley. No mountains at all. The biggest mountain we have is just a tiny, tiny hill. You know, you can probably find one in the Palmer Park, you know? So really, we're very flat as a land. And I always, always, always growing up just wanted to see the mountains. It was one of my big, big, big dreams. So when I grew up and I got a chance to go to a different country, I went to the United States of America and I went to Maryland. I was studying in Maryland and guess what? Maryland has some mountains. It's right next to West Virginia. It's beautiful. You guys love mountains, right? Now, I've never seen mountains. So for the first time I saw them when we were driving up, I was like, this is amazing. West Virginia mountains are awesome. And I remember that first Sabbath that I was there, our class decided to go for a walk. You know, after potluck, your belly's full, you need to move a little bit. So they said, Laura, do you want to go on a hike? I'm like, sounds great. But I didn't know where they were taking me. They said, there is this really cool place called Black Rock. It's really, really awesome. It takes a little bit of work getting there, but it's worth it. I'm like, sounds good. So we went through the forest, and I could see we're climbing up, going up the rocks, but we're in the forest the whole entire time. We got to the very top, and they say, okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. I'm like, all right, I'm already huffing and puffing. There's trees everywhere. And guess what? I get to the top, to the black rock, and guess what? The trees part, and we're standing on top of this beautiful mountain, on this beautiful black rock, and we're overseeing a huge valley and mountains and everything. I was just blown away. I was standing there and I felt like, wow, my dreams are coming true right now. Ever been up the mountain where you were just like, wow, this looks beautiful? No? Have you? Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It can really blow your mind. Anybody been there to where mountains just take your breath away and you feel like everything's so big and you're so small, but it's so, so magnificent. So I was there and one day, I'm sure you guys will get to climb a mountain. When you do, remember the story. Okay. And so we're there in the mountains. Now there were probably about 10 of us or so. 
And everybody's just starting to kind of, I think we sang a song, said a prayer, and then everybody was just kind of, you know, walking around a little bit different places. There were rocks you could climb. And I started exploring. I'm like, oh, going there, going there. And then I noticed just below me, there's another little rock that kind of goes right over the ledge, you know, like, like a sharp drop down. And I thought, oh, cool. I want to go there. Yeah. So I climbed up. Look, yeah, that's enough space. I climbed up and I climbed up on that ledge. And there is, I'm standing on the ledge. A rock wall is right behind me. It's taller than me. At this point, the view is incredible because, and it's a bit scary, you know? It's like a huge drop down, but I can't see any of my friends now because they're up there and the wall is right behind me. And guess what? I'm standing there and it looks amazing, but I'm starting to get a little nervous. I'm standing there and I'm standing there and I'm starting to feel funny. Anybody got to guess what I was feeling? Yeah. Do you like butterflies in your stomach? I was feeling butterflies in my stomach. Um, scared. Scared. What's the word when you start losing balance? Huh? Dizzy? Yeah? Okay, so I start, yeah, do you know that word? Nervous. Nervous, yeah, that's definitely one good word. So anyway, there is a word for that when you're losing balance. Vertigo? Yeah, I guess that's what it was. So I started feeling dizzy. And I started, like, literally started feeling like I'm oozing and moving around. And I'm like, oh, no. So I backed up to the wall, and I'm touching the wall, but I am so scared. I wasn't fully touching the wall, just a part of it with my shoulders. There's my body. And although there was a little bit, enough space to the edge, I was starting to feel dizzy and lose it. And I started kind of looking around to see, can anybody see me? And at some point in time, I started thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to fall because I'm starting to feel like my body is losing control. I am totally losing orientation about what's going on. And at that point, guess what I did? No. If I would have fallen, I probably wouldn't be here today because <laughs> it was a big drop. Guys. You pray. Yeah. I was like, okay. But by that time, I was pretty sure I'm going to go down because I was blacking out already. I was starting to lose it. And I'm like, Jesus, please, I'm sorry for coming down on this ledge, but can you save? And I mean, seriously, I was starting to blur out. And then out of a blue, I felt a hand, boom, on my head. And I was like, open my eyes. That hand on my head stabilized me completely. And I was like, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. Somebody sees me. Somebody's touching me. And I remember I just said, don't let go. And then I heard a voice from my friend saying, Laura, are you okay? Don't worry, I'm not gonna let you go. And I was like, I recognized one of my classmates' voice. I was like, oh my goodness, just, just hold me, hold me. He's like, all right, don't worry, just move carefully. So he helped me to turn around and grab my whale around the rock and get to a place where I could climb out. Now, I don't know how he saw how I climbed there. I'm not sure that he did but I'm pretty sure that it was God that told them to come there just at the time that I needed and to stabilize me, bring me back to senses and save me. I want to read to you a verse, Isaiah 41, 10. That's a verse that you might have heard, but it says this. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Now, the hand that kind of stabilized me and sat on my head was the hand of my friend. But really, honestly, it's a little bit like the hand of God. When we're afraid, when we're losing balance, when we go off the trail, when we do things that we shouldn't be doing, you know what? You can always call on God. You can always call on God. And His, stand, his hand is going to hold on to you and not let you go until you're safe. All right? Who would like to say a prayer right now? And just thank God for all of his protection. Would you like to pray? No? Okay. Who would like to pray? I'm trying to hypnotize you guys to pray, <laughs> and everybody's doing this. <laughs> yes, thank you, Luke. Dear Jesus, thank you for the thank you for the story that has just been said and that we should always call on God because he can help us to 
to um to to be stabilized and to not let go of him. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, children. Go you can go back to your seats now. Thank you very much, uh, Laura, for the children's story. Um, so at this time, um, we're just going to start off with the offering. So the offering, why do I give offering? Why do you return your offering? Um, I think it's, it's important to understand why you return your offering. For me personally, it's because when I return my offering, it's a symbol of me trusting in God, trusting in the fact that even if I don't have something, if it's um, if, if, if I ask him for it, he'll provide me according to my needs, according to my needs. But it's the fact that I know I can rely on him regardless of the circumstance. So I urge you to ask yourself the question, why do you return tithes and offering? Why do you return tithes and offering? And it's a conversation I want you to have continually with God. But as you're having that conversation, for those of you who are going to return your tithes and offering, um, we've got deacons who are going to be waiting on us for the offering but if you didn't bring any um, cash we've got Auntie Violet with a card reader at the back so she's just there raising her hand um, to your left my right so you can go and return your tithes and offering that way and the praise team is just going to bless us with a song of meditation as we collect the tithes and offering we're saying give and it will come back to you for when you give give to the Lord Sarah decided to put God first in her life. What can we learn from her story today that will help us put God first in our own? Into the Lord, give it into the Lord, because when you give to the Lord, and one more time, give it into the Lord, give it into the Lord. Give it in to the Lord, because when you give to the Lord, it will come back. Give and it, give and it will come back. Full measure, full measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Give and it will come back to you when you give. Oh, give to the Lord. Give and it will come back. Give and it will come back to you. Full measure. Full measure. Press down. Shaken. Running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give. When you give. This verse says, Trust and he will take care. Trust and he will take care of you. Full measure. Full measure. Press down. Shaken. Running over. Trust. And he will take care of you when you trust, when you trust, trust. Sing that verse again. Trust and he will take care. Trust and he will take care of you. Full measure, full measure. Press down, shake it, run it over. Trust and he will take care of you. He will take care when you trust, trust in the Lord. Give it into the Lord. Give it into the Lord. Give it into the Lord, cause when you give to the Lord, it will come. It will come back. To give you. it in. Give it in to, to the Lord. Lord. Give, give it in, yes, to the Lord. To the Lord. When cause when you give, it, Lord, it will come. It will come give back it in to the Lord. Give it in to the Lord. Give it in. to the Lord. But when you give to the Lord, it will give and it will come back to you. Give and it will come back to you. When you, when, give, you give, when you give, when you give, give, give to the Lord. Give and it will come back to you. Give and it will come back to you. Full measure, Full measure press down, down shake and together, shake and run it over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give, when you give, give to the Lord. When you give, when you give, give to the Lord. 
to the Lord. Oh, when you give, when you give, give to the Lord. One, one more time, when you give, when you give, give to the Lord. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to develop the character of trusting you. We thank you that we understand that you're the source of everything. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you because we know that regardless of the circumstances and the situations we find ourselves, you are the source of everything. Dear Father, it all belongs to you. Help us to take confidence in this. And as we return our tithes and offerings, help us to understand that all we're doing is exercising that trust in you. Continue to develop this trust in all of us. And I pray that the money that we've collected may serve the purpose which you would like it to serve. And when it's all said and done, we may be glad that we're able to play a small part, dear Father, in furthering your work, which you can do without our money. But you invite us to take part in it. So we thank you for this and for many more prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to ask Lydia quickly to give a quick announcement um, concerning a very interesting event that's going to happen. Um, and then later on, the praise team is going to come and bless us with a song. And then we're going to have our speaker. So just before, our speaker is Pastor Thompson and his family who are here. So I pray that as he ministers to us today, that your hearts and your ears are opened to receive the word of God, but most importantly, that your life is transformed. So I pray that um, as he uh, blesses us with the word, that all of you are blessed too. So Lydia. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, Emmanuel. Good afternoon. Okay, um, just before I talk about this, I will be quick, JP. Um, who can tell me what is the body of Christ? What? Yes, young man? Didn't think of that, but yes. <laughs> That's not where I was going, but very good. Um, what? What is the, a body? A body. Not the body of Christ, your body. What are the parts of your body? Come on, guys. I don't have long. Yes, Luke? So, so. Blood? Yes. Arms? Very good. Legs? Heads? Pardon? Nose? Very important, actually. Yeah. Your eyes? Yes, Luke? Your school. Okay, Luke. <laughs> yes. Your veins. Okay. Yes, JP? Your ears. And we have two. Anyway, yes. Um, so why am I talking about the body when I want to talk about this? So who knows what this is? It's a backside play. Okay. So this is ministry. That's what I want to start with. Um, this is ministry, and this is just like um, Dr. Thompson is going to come and talk in a minute. That's one way of ministering to others and um, sharing the gospel. And this is what we want to do with this play as well. Um, and we want to go out there because not necessarily everybody will come in here or in our churches. So even those who do not believe in Christ may go to a play, but they may not hear Dr. Thompson. So... Um, we are asking everybody as part of the body of Christ, so the arms, the eyes, the ears, um, the legs, um, to help us. So you may not be in the cast, you may not be doing the props, but you can talk to somebody, you can share with somebody, you can buy a ticket for somebody. And uh, <laughs> talking about buying, we are not doing this for the money at all. We have tried to put it as low as possible um, so that as many people can come. So if you 
um, if you cannot be part of it, even if you can't come, but you can invite your friends, your colleagues, your family, or anybody that you meet um, to come. And Sister Violet here is our local agent. Um, so <laughs> she's selling tickets with no booking fees, um, but people can also book through um, the box office. That was me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lydia. So I'm just going to invite the praise team to bless us uh, with a hymn of meditation. And then after, uh, Dr. Thompson, the pulpit is yours. So this song simply says that he's a, a good, good father. Do you believe that he's a good, good father? Just wave your hand if you do. If he's been good to you and you believe he's a good, good father. Now we're going to put the words up on the screen for you as well. So, you know, if you do want to sing along, you can do. But I really want you to think about and meditate on the words of this song and what it means to you, what it means that he's been doing for you in your life. You know, sometimes we may find ourselves in difficult situations and we can't see the good, good father in the situation, but we know that he is good and he will come through for us. So just think about the words as we sing this song this morning. So undeniable. 
Sabbath church. Is he a good, good father? Is he a good, good father? Amen. I, I, it's my prayer that, that by the end of this message we'll all be able to, to answer yes, indeed. He is a good father to each and every one of us. It's lovely to be here with you and to see familiar faces um, from the Reading District of Churches. Those of you know, this is my home. I said, this is my home. <laughs> and it's always great to see familiar faces. I saw Sister Kajo walk in earlier at the back. Hello, Sister Kajo, lovely to, to see you. I haven't seen you for, for a while. Um, I'm joined here also today by my family, my sister Helena and her husband Yudoka are here. My, my parents are here. And my wonderful wife is here whose birthday was yesterday. Sorry, I wasn't meant to, I wasn't meant to <laughs> I wasn't meant to say that. Um, and in the, in the corner of my eye here as well, I see Manami and Helen, two of my Hebrew students <laughs> from Newball College. It's great to see um, you guys as well. I also bring you greetings from the, the British Union Conference and the Stamber Press, where I currently work. Just so that you know, um, there are some substantial changes that will be coming to Messenger. So if there's anything that you think I should know as we start this process, please do grab me before I leave. Um, I'm all ears and wanted to know your thoughts and so on and so forth. Okay. I'd invite you to turn with me now in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. And I'm going to read from verse 30 for you. It's a story that I'm sure is very, very familiar to many of you here. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 30. 
Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, and so likewise a Levite. And when he came to the place and saw him, uh, passed by on the other side also. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Let's bow our heads for the word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, as we consider the subject matter, how to read a story, we ask, Lord, that you will indeed speak to us. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. The song that was sung so beautifully by the praise team I don't know if you picked it up, but it starts with the words, I've heard a thousand what? Stories. Uh, Before that, the praise team, they also sang a song, this is my, this is my. So I want to begin by asking a question. Uh, Have you ever had to tell your story? Have you ever had to tell your story? I guess there are different ways in which this could happen, right? You know, maybe you, you bump into somebody, you, you get talking, and you're asked that question, you know, oh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Has anybody ever been asked that question? Yeah, tell me a bit about yourself. I mean, I guess in those types of situations, it's not so bad, right? But then... There's that other type of situation where maybe you're in a job interview, right? (laughs) You're already nervous as it is. You've you've, um, memorized your responses to the standard interview questions, and then they completely catch you off guard by saying, tell me a little bit about yourself. And you start thinking, well, where do I begin? And you know, the longer you live, the more potentially you have to tell, right? Well, it's interesting because uh, there is a Christian author by the name of Donald Miller, and he wrote a book called A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. A Million Miles in a Thousand Years. And what was really interesting about this book is that uh, Donald Miller was actually asked to create a film about his life. He's invited to create a film about his life, and so what happened was was that the producer and um, different people came to him, and they wanted to know his story, and they were trying to, to, to work out what is the best way of framing this man's life in film. Does that make sense? And so in this book, he starts to reflect on this process of turning his life into a story, but but not just any story, a story that's suitable for a format such as film. If the BBC came and knocked on your door and they said, what is your story? And they sat down with you at your kitchen table pen in hand, dictaphone there, recording on film, what would you say? Where would you start? How would you begin? Or actually, is it better to start at the end? What would be the highlights? 
What would be the high points? What would be the low points? Have you ever been asked to tell your story? I can see we're, we're thinking here. We're thinking here. Next slide, please. Now, there are people who get paid a lot more money than I to talk about storytelling. And I'm sure some of you may have gone to some of those sessions yourself. So some of what I'm about to share with you may not be anything new. But essentially, storytelling is an art form. It's an art form. And I'm sure we all know, maybe there's that friend in our friendship group who, when they tell the story, it just drops differently. You know? Or, or my, every church has that individual who, you know, we have loads of amazing children's stories, but there's, that, there's always that one person who, when they tell the children's story, even the adults are on the edge of the seats, right? Storytelling is an art form. It's a, it's a gift, and there are some people who are exceptional at it. And then there are other people like me who study about it. <laughs> and what's interesting is that people who studied stories, they've actually come to the conclusion that, you know what, all stories have essentially just a few elements. Bear with me, I'm going to walk through them with you, and I'm going somewhere on this. Some of you may need um, um, glasses for, for this, but... Um, Let's see how we go from there. So I'm going to stand from, from your perspective. So that picture at the top left there, top left square, can anybody see what's going on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you've got, you've got a boy um, on the left, and he's looking up at the tree. And in the tree, there is something round. So it's probably an apple or a fruit of some kind. And he's standing there, and he's looking up at the tree. And there's a dog on the other side as well. Okay. Next to that square, can anybody see what's happening? Yeah? So, he, he's, he, so he's seen the fruit in the first square, and now he's jumping, and he's trying to, to what? He's trying to grab, trying to grab the, the, the fruit, right? And the dog is trying to help him too. <laughs> okay, so... If we come down now to that middle picture, the landscape one, um, what's happening there? Yeah, he, he slid down. It, it looks like he, he wasn't able to, 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 to get the fruit the other way. So, actually, you probably can't see it. But if you look closely, he's actually starting to shake the tree. So, you have a boy. He looks up. He sees a fruit. He wants the fruit. He jumps up twice to get the fruit, but he's not able to get it. So now he's trying to shake the tree to get it. Okay. Bottom left. Can anybody see what's happened there? So he's, he's shaken the tree, and he got a bit more than he was asking for, right? <laughs> so he's shaken the tree. Those of you who can't see, basically he's stuck underneath a pile of apples. And then the, the square towards the, the, the right there, um, the final situation, he's sitting there and he's got a little bit more than he bargained for. Okay, next, next slide, please. Yes, yes, keep, keep pressing. Okay, that's good. Let's, let's stay there. Okay. So... People who study stories, they suggest that each story can be broken down into five different parts. You have an initial situation where they just sort of let you know what the current state of affairs are. So first square, you have a boy, he's looking up and he sees a fruit and he wants the fruit. They say that in order for a story to, to really be gripping, there has to be some sort of complication. There has to be something that happens, some dramatic situation or something that the character has to overcome. Complication. He sees the fruit, he wants it, but 
he can't reach it. Drama. What's going to happen next? He slides down the tree. And they say that once the complication has been realized, then each story has a transforming action that occurs. And a transforming action is an action that leads to the resolution. Transforming action. He wasn't able to get it by jumping, so he shakes the tree. Resolution. All of the apples fall on him. And then final situation, maybe he's a little bit dizzy, but, you know, at least he got an apple. Interesting, isn't it? You can apply this to pretty much any biblical story. Any story in the Bible, or, or almost any story in life. I mean, let's have a think about the story of the Good Samaritan, right? That we just read. Initial situation. You have a man, he's going on a journey. Something happens. He gets robbed, right? Complication. Will he survive? Will he get to the other side? Did anybody even know that he was injured lying there in the middle of the road, right? Complication. Two religious individuals walk past, right? Priest, Levi, do they help the situation? No. In fact, it's getting even more complex and the, 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 the drama is being heightened. We as the reader are thinking, goodness me, how could the priest not help him? How could the, the Levite, the religious man, how could he not help him either? And so he's laying there in the road. And then what happens? A Samaritan walks by. Some of you may not know, but you know, in, in, in those times, the Samaritans and the Israelites, they didn't get along. But do you know what happens? Unlike the priest and unlike the religious individual, the Samaritan stops. A, transformation, a transforming action is starting to take place as he bandages him, right? As he pours oil on his wounds, as he pours wine on his wounds. Transforming action. He puts him on his own horse, takes him to the inn, tells the innkeeper to look, look after him. Resolution. Final situation. We're left with this image of this, this traveler who was once robbed, left for dead, is now being looked after in an inn by an innkeeper. Final situation. Why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about this? Well, you see, each and every one of us, we have our own story. And I know that in some ways, this is a bit of a dry diagram by people who are better at studying stories and telling them. But on the other hand, if we all have a story, then it's possible that each one of us finds ourselves in one of these squares. See, I, I don't know what's going on in your lives today, but when I watch the news, when I read the newspapers, when I see what's going on in the world, it suggests to me that a lot of us are experiencing some complications today. It tells me that as the months get colder, some of us may find it difficult to turn our heating on. 
tells me that as interest rates grows up, some of us are going to find it harder to pay our mortgages. But that may not be your complication. Your complication may be something else. Your complication may be a complication that, well, I'm not sure I can share it in church. You may be here today because you are in square two and you are asking God to take you to square three. Your presence here today might be because you recognize that, you know what? Without some sort of external input into my situation, I don't see myself ever getting to square four in resolution. And as the one who's been invited to share with you today, my message is simply this. The traveler in the story of of the Good Samaritan, he was in a situation. He was laying bloodied and beaten on the road, unable to help himself. Those who, who you would have thought would have helped him walked by because they had more important things to do. But what happened? A Good Samaritan came by. And at a point in time when he was not, the traveler was not able to help himself, God sent somebody else. I'm here today to tell you, whatever complication you may be facing, we serve a God who is interested in transforming action. He can take your complication and bring you to resolution and a final situation. And do you know what? When he does that, do you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that when you sit down now, when you're sitting down in Starbucks or or wherever you are and you you get talking to somebody and they say, oh, you tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're going to have a story to tell. Because you see, when God brings you to resolution, you cannot keep it to yourself. You have to share just like when you're with your group of friends, right? And something, something funny happens, right? And then you, 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 know, you can't keep it to yourself. And so then when you see somebody else who you know would appreciate the story, what do you do? You tell it. It's the same thing. Do you think that that traveler... Okay, we're not told the end of the story. So this is sanctified imagination. Let's call it that. But do you think that the traveler who was, who was looked after as a result of the actions of the Good Samaritan, do you think he would have kept that to himself? No. No. I see, I want to suggest to you, I want to suggest to you, that perhaps... Perhaps, perhaps one of the things that we ought to be praying for today is for God to transform our complication so that we can tell others our story about him. Next slide, please. Because you see, for those of us who, who believe in the Lord, for those of us for whom Jesus is our personal savior, we want our final situation to be a situation 
that when Christ comes back, he takes us with him. Are you following me? Because you see, we don't just want to tell any story. Trust me, if the BBC came to your front door and they, 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 they said, look, we want to make a story about your life, you would want it to be a good story, right? And so for the Christian, a good story is a story that ends up in the kingdom of God, is it not? And so, you see, here's the thing, right? So it means that transforming actions that we need the Lord to do for us is not simply a resolution of the complication, but it is a transformation of us as people. The transforming of our complications is not enough for our story to be a good story we have to be transformed as well the story of the good samaritan was a good story that's why many of us have heard it before and that's why many of us have heard it many times. But you know what? The Levite in the story, his story wasn't a good one. The priest in the story, his story wasn't a good one. But the Samaritan, I would like my story when it's told, to be like that of the Good Samaritan. A story that speaks about helping others who perhaps weren't able to help themselves. A story that speaks about stepping across enemy lines. A story that speaks about a, a generous life. That's the kind of story that leads to a final situation in the kingdom of God. And so as I close with a prayer, I just want to pause for a moment of reflection. I just want us to think a little bit about our own story. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise hands or anything like that. But I just want us to pause for a moment and think, what kind of story am I living? Am I living a good story? Or if I'm honest with myself, am I just living a complication? If you're sitting there and thinking, do you know what? Julian, I, my story is not the kind of story that I, I'm, a, I'm proud of. Then, you know, I, I want to encourage you, you know, don't leave here today without speaking to myself or out, without speaking to Pastor Warren or one of the pastoral team because, you know, we want to, Maybe, 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 maybe we could define church as a place where we transform people's stories. Maybe church is a place that you know we 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 we, we come to and we 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 can open up and we can we can we can share what's going on for us in our lives and with the support of a community, we can overcome our complications. Maybe that's what church can be. Maybe that's what church is. But I want us to think honestly and sincerely, what is our story today? And if it's not where it ought to be, I want to challenge you to speak to myself or Pastor Warren or one of the, the leadership team and pray for you because we want to start you on that journey 
of living a good story. What do you say? Do we believe he's a good father? Do we believe he's a good father? Because you see, if we believe that the Lord is a good father, then it means that you know, no matter what our story is, we can bring it to him. And as a father, he knows how to resolve complications. Has, has anybody found themselves in a, in, a, in a situation that was complicated and let's be honest, we needed our parents to help bail us out? Yeah, anyone? <laughs> That's who the Lord is to us. Will you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, Lord, we spent a bit of time just reflecting on um, sort of our own personal stories and you know I know that many of us in here we we want to live a good story but it's not easy all the time and sometimes we get a little bit stuck in our complications I pray father in heaven that um, maybe as we reflect on these words as we reflect on the the story of the good Samaritan that um, the Holy Spirit will continue to work on our hearts It'll help us to see that it's not only our complication that needs transforming, but it's, 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 it's us. We need a new heart. We need to be transformed from the inside and out. And Lord, I pray that if there's, there's anybody in here who, for whom that, that is their desire, that, that you will give them the strength to, to take a step to, towards finding that uh, transforming action in you. Thank you, Lord, for being with us here at Parkside today. Pray that you'll continue to watch over Parkside Church, its leadership team, Pastor Warren, the elders. And that this will be a place where people come and their stories are transformed and their final situations are situations that end up in the kingdom of God. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Thompson, for just reminding us of the fact that we all have a story and um, we could be at various stages in our story, but um, I think the praise team, it's amazing how God just put everything together because the praise team sang, you're a good father, and the story is talking about a good father who's able to put those pieces of our story that might not be intact. So it's amazing how God works. I pray that your experience today has been rich. I pray that today your experience with God has been real but most importantly I pray that your experience with God has been honest and reflective and it's my prayer that as you continue to go throughout the Sabbath that you may simply meditate and kind of chew on those words that Dr. Thompson has spoken about of the importance of understanding where you are in your story and the fact that we have a good father who's able to redirect the course of the course of your story if it's in going in the wrong direction so I thank you for worshiping with us um, and continue to worship with us um, next week at 11.30. What time did I say? 11.15? 11.30. Thank you very much. At 11.30. So the experience, your experience can be rich because the way you get a rich experience is if you start with us in the morning with praise and um, with Sabbath school, then you work your way through the praise and worship. You work your way into the prayer. From the prayer, the children's story, the offering, the sermon, and then last but not least, the praise team will come and close us out. So that is a rich experience, but it doesn't have to stop there. As you go home, the experience continues. So I pray that you continue to share that experience, not just here, but also when you go outside, share it with your neighbors, your friends, and those um, who you come in contact with. So thank you very much for worshiping with us. Yeah, so I'm just going to get past this just quickly, do a prayer to close, and then the praise team, I'm going to invite you over to come and just close us out. But thank you once again for worshiping with us. Pastor. 
Let's pray to close. Father in heaven, Lord, as we um, draw this service to a close and as our minds start to think about uh, perhaps a nice, nice lunch that may be waiting for us or start to think about what, what's going to take place uh, during the, the rest of our days. We pray, Lord, that, um, that our experience here today will, will continue with us. Um, in fact, Lord, I, I, I pray that you will continue to, to speak to us in those still moments um, and challenge us to, to, to live a better story, to transform our complications, and to tell others about you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, as we sing this last song, I'll invite you to um, pack your chairs away to the side. You can join us with us as, as you're doing that. Um, the Lord's our rock. In him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Sing it with us as you pack the chairs away. Secure 